everybody, and welcome back to Music Impossible. My name is Professor Jim, and today we're going to do our next tutorial on the menu in Sibelius. So as we take a look at our next section here, now the main menus up here, you have File, Home, Note Input, Notations, Text, Play, Layout, Appearance, Parts, Review, and View. So a couple of pretty good videos out there already we've done under the Playlist Sibelius Tutorials. And we've looked at panels and then we looked at the rest of the submenus under view. Today we're going to go to the home uh, tab right here. We're going to go to the home tab. We're going to look at the first three subheadings here, subsections, clipboard, instruments, and bars. Let's dive right into it. So uh, right here, clipboard is all the things you would uh, expect to see, copy, paste, cut. These are all things that are pretty common. The same, uh, remember if you hover over any of these two, uh, Sibelius will give you a little pop-up window and it'll show you the shortcut as well. So just like in most applications, Command C, Command V for copy and paste, Command X for cut. So those are pretty common amongst, amongst most applications in the Mac universe. And then capture idea. Now, before I go any further, I want you to know that I'm working in Sibelius Ultimate. That is the, the top version, the professional version that Avid offers in Sibelius. So you may not have some of these features if you're using uh, the uh, lesser two versions of Sibelius. I love the capture idea. As, a, as an educator, I like to use this to uh, create um, things that I can come back to and, and reteach, things that caught my attention that I really liked. So capture idea, it, it could be a melody, it could be a formatting thing, it could be anything you want it to be, a really cool chord progression that you came across. And so let's say I, you know, I'm, I'm here and I'm, I have the notes... Uh, C, D, E, C, D, E there. And we have C, D, E. And was like, oh, I really like that melody, C, D, E. I'm going to capture this idea. And I can highlight those two bars. Click Capture Idea. And it gets put on a very special clipboard inside of Sibelius. And to go find those ideas, we're going to go all the way back to View and Panels and Ideas right there. And all of the ideas that you've created are in white up here at the top. So I have this CDE. I captured that idea and I can insert that and pull it and use it again during other uh, sessions later in Sibelius. Maybe I'm working on a film score and I came up with an idea that doesn't work in a particular scene, but thematically it works inside the film and I can pull it back into a later version of the film. Or you just like the idea and want to reuse it again. And then Sibelius has some of their own built-in uh, ideas here that you could tap into, if uh, especially if you get into a sort of a writer's block type of thing and you just need a groove, you need an idea to kind of help you get started. Those are there for you as well. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of that. There's always a shortcut to, looks like, what is that? That is, is that option command I? Is that what that is? So that's the shortcut for, for idea, the idea panel. All right. And then after capture idea, this is another cool thing, select graphic. Uh, when I'm creating some of these classes, sometimes I want to just have something as a JPEG. I just want to have an image of some kind of an idea. And then I don't know, maybe... Um, So kind of low notes, two low notes for a piccolo. But I have these these this notes these notes here, and I, I wanted to just have a photo of that. And so I'm going to come over here to select graphic right here, and I can select graphic, and it allows you to select an area of the score, keep it. It's kind of like a screenshot, and then you can use that image in on websites or in educational tools you wanted to share an idea with a, a writing partner that isn't sitting with you uh, a number of uses for select graphic okay so here we go let's take a look at this next tab instruments let's say i'm going along here i'm writing for what do i have this is a concert band so i'm going to have of course all of my woodwinds brass and percussion uh, for this particular score uh, but let's say I wanted to add a vocalist to this, and I'm just going to go ahead and add it to the top of the score. Uh, maybe we had a vocalist singing along with our concert band. So I'm going to click Add Remove, and then here you have every conceivable instrument that, that uh, exists, and it has these different categories that you could use. Um, it's got all sorts of things here. And over here on the right is your existing 
staves on on the on the uh, score you have uh, currently. So I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to type vocal or voice. There it is, voice. And so uh, in the find tab, and so I'm just going to pick voice, add to score. Where did it add it? It added it at the bottom. All so, right, so let's go ahead and move this up, 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 up again. Nice. All right, so when we click OK, as soon as decrease the size, so it needs to do some formatting for us, and it's added the voice here, a treble clef voice here at the top. So that's add or remove. And then I want, if I wanted to remove it, I'd come back, delete from score, yes, I'm sure, and OK. And now we're back to our original staff change this is kind of a cool feature uh, i've seen changes used mostly at least in, in my experience i'm sure there's other uh examples of it um uh, one is in percussion that's a pretty common place to have a change and so for example if you're down here in their percussion section and you're starting off with claves and you want the the uh player to switch to to, to triangle or something along those lines and you could always uh start here with claves and then click the bar you want the triangle to start and then come and hit change and it'll change it to triangle the other use that i wanted to illustrate all the way through that i see in music theater a lot i've played in lots of pit orchestras in my day and i played a lot of reed two books which was clarinet bass clarinet saxophone some oboe and uh you would go along and you would start off with maybe b flat clarinet and then at some point in the score, it wants you to switch to, oh, let's switch to saxophone. So it's right here in bar one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So after the first phrase, it wants me to switch here to saxophone. You click change. Let's see, what are we going to switch to? Let's switch to, I don't know, how about a tenor sax? Tenor saxophone right there. And so we're going to click OK. And then for that one bar, because I only highlighted the one bar, it's going to switch to tenor saxophone. If I wanted the tenor sax to switch to multiple bars, I would have to come over here. I'm, I'm hitting the shift button to highlight one. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm clicking a measure to highlight one measure and then clicking the shift button to highlight everything from that measure to my second click. And maybe I want the saxophone to be there. So let's have saxophone be that long. And so it's telling the player uh, to switch to center saxophone. Now, we'd probably have to come in here and switch the font and all that. It's a little bit too big for the staff. That will tell the, the clarinet player to switch to tenor saxophone. And then here in this bar, it would tell them to switch back to clarinet and be flat. Uh, not only is that great for your printed music and your musicians, but also Sibelius will recognize that as well and switch the tones that it has. Although the samples in Sibelius that come with it aren't great, it'll still give you a sense of uh, what it may, close to what it would sound like. All right, so we're going to undo all that. Command-Z, Command-Z. And let's finish this. Transposing score. If you have not done a lot of orchestration or played in bands before, you may not know this, but not every instrument is pitched the same way. There's instruments that are uh, what we would say pitched in C, and those are uh, like uh, piano and flute are all C instruments. Let's see, uh, another C instrument, trombone, tuba. These are all pitched in C, but you might notice that this is clarinet in B flat, saxophone in E flat. Uh, we have a tenor sax in B flat, horn in F, the trumpet. Is there a trumpet here? Trumpet in B flat. So yeah, so all these are pitched differently. And the way this works is, if a flute player or a piano player plays a B flat, that note is a C on the clarinet. So the clarinet player would play the note C on their instrument, but it would make the tone of a B flat. We call that concert B flat, where the flute and piano would play B flat, but the clarinet would be playing a C on their instrument, and it's the same pitch. And we use a transposing score when we want to print this. Now, I tend to write here with everybody in the same key, and then once I've written a melody, let's just write... So we have this little melody, bum, 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 bum. And I want to have the clarinets also play this melody. So we're going to come over here and copy and paste that into the clarinet. But that's too high for the clarinet. See how Sibelius turns the note red gets, when it gets too high? When it gets too high for the clarinet, it turns red. Also, when an instrument gets too low for the range of that instrument, it'll turn red also. And since a piccolo uh, plays an octave higher than written, 
That's why it copied and pasted it that way. And so let's take the same melody here in the clarinets and let's put it in, I don't know, let's put it in the horns right here. All right, and all that's too high for the horn. So let's take all of that down an octave like that. All right, I just had highlighted these three bars and used my arrow keys on my computer keyboard to do those changes. Now, they they're all playing the same pitches, C, D, E, F, G, F, E, D, C, right? And as it looks right now, they are all the exact same note. But when I click transposing score, ooh, look what happens. The key of C for the piccolo and the flute and the oboe is the key of D and the clarinets. So our notes C, D, E, F, G, F, E, D, C became D, E, F, sharp, G, A, G, F, sharp, E, D. Same pitches, but they're played as different notes on those instruments. Horn and F. The key of C in the horn of F, it's up a fifth, a perfect fifth from uh, the concert pitch key. So the key of C in the piano or the flute is the key of G in French horn. And so it's adjusted its pitches, G, A, B, C, D, C, B, A, G. But if I come back and I hit play for all of these, it's going to sound the same. Different octaves, but same pitches. All right, that is transposing score. I tend to write it out of transposing score. I can see my harmonies a little bit better that way. And then when I'm done, I'll click the transposing score button and then maybe have to go in and fix some ranges and things like that along the way so that it is playable by musicians. Okay. Well, next we have this sort of this Asha staff. So let's say I wanted these three bars of my piccolo to have an extra small staff above. I've seen this in a couple of different places. Usually this is alternate ideas. Uh, maybe it's a, uh, it's uh, an instrument maybe is, is testing the range of a of the piccolo player to play really, really high. Well, instead of playing really, really high, maybe it gives you an alternate version of that melody or that part to, to play for less experienced players. Sometimes there's uh, an improvisation sections. There might be suggested solos or, or hit points for different notes. Now, there's so many reasons you might want to use an Asha staff, and that's a couple of the reasons. And then we have add, delete, split, and join in our bars. Really quick, this is pretty easy. It's got this little drop-down box. If you want to add bars at certain points in your score, you can experiment with that. And then deleting staffs. Um, I'm going to just hit shift and click there and i'm just going to click delete and it's going to get rid of all of those bars all the way down the score by the way not just the, the piccolo part and then if you ever wanted to split a staff not not too many reasons why people would want to split staffs uh, there's a couple of good reasons it's for more advanced well that's for a different class but it does exist all right so let's go ahead and we're gonna split it right there maybe on that e and it'll split there. Ask you a few questions of how you want to do it. Do you want a bar line? Um, and then I click that and it splits the staffs for me. I've seen this happen at the end of systems a lot where there's a fermata maybe here on two counts of a 4-4 time. And then they use the other two counts on the next system to uh, as pickup notes, for example, splitting bars. And then joining bars is if you want it, an entire 4-4 bar to be joined, you click that. Do you want any bar lines? I'm going to say no. And then it really becomes an 8-8 eight, eight bar, if you will, by joining those two together. Even the rests have moved to multi-measure rest there, an 8-bar rest. So that is the join. I've seen that before in, um, I see, I've used it before once. I had sort of this alternating uh, time signature piece. It was 3-4 followed by 3-8. Uh, so we had this sort of recurring thing. And then at the end of each phrase, bar eight, we would have a nine eight bar because it would be, because melodically it's kind of what. So that is the join. I've seen that before in, see, I've used it before once. I had sort of this alternating time signature piece. It was three four followed by three eight. So we had this sort of recurring thing. And then at the end of each phrase, bar eight, 
we would have a nine eight bar because it would be because um, melodically it kind of went like this. It is uh, so at the end of the phrase we sort of that's sort of this descending thing that was still nine notes long, just like three four and three eight would be, but it felt better to end the phrase on that nine eight bar. It made more sense rhythmically and 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 harmonically, melodically, what have you. And you can just join bars together that way. All right, that is the first three subcategories of home. We're going to tackle the next half in the next video. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.